Welcome to Durbania. I'm Durbin, and joining me today is Matix. And we are going to talk about the final Fast and the Furious movie to come out before this new one. So, this is my first time ever going through this franchise. We finally made it here to the seventh. And uh, again, my first time. So, this is all me looking at this through fresh eyes, my initial impressions of these things, and uh, getting ready for Fast 8. So, before we jump into this review, Matix, tell us a little bit about you and your channel and what you do. You can just search my name in YouTube. You will find my channel. I do movie reviews. I do trailer reactions, just all that fun stuff. All very original and also I, I have a sec <laughs> I have a second channel where I uh, do movies of my own uh, I shot a feature-length film ya last year and I released it on last Christmas and I would be really grateful if you check that out and I'm go also going to do some short movies in the future on that channel so yeah I would be really grateful if you would subscribe to that channel also thanks and be sure to check out that channel and subscribe to it because like that that's a lot of hard work I'm in a group that's trying to produce short films right now and it's it takes a lot of planning and stuff like that, so check out those movies. So, Fast 7. No, it's Furious, Furious 7. 7. It's confusing. It just is. It's just confusing. So, I have to say, I think of all of this franchise, I think I enjoyed the seventh one the best. And there's a lot of reasons why. I think I enjoyed the story more, even though it is hilarious to me that they went from street racers to thieves to undercover cops, to spies. I just, that, that progression is beyond ridiculous. It makes complete sense to me. Okay, well that's good. And, and I like Kurt Russell. So you bring in Jason Statham, who yeah. I love and think is awesome. Then you bring in Kurt Russell, who exudes awesome. And so right there, you've added two elements that are, are already fantastic. Now this movie is also beyond ridiculous in its action like the other ones, which continues to confirm the theory that I put forth in Fast Five that <laughs> everybody in this franchise is from the planet Krypton and under the yellow sun, they now have tremendous powers and are completely unbreakable. But when you embrace that they're Kryptonian, it is really, really fun. So Matix, let's start with you. Um, the seventh movie, your thoughts. It is a lot of fun. I, I, I think, yeah, I love this movie. <laughs> It is so much fun. I actually reviewed this movie when it originally came out. Yeah, there is a two-year-old uh, review on my channel, so you can also check that out. But there we yes, go. I really liked it, and I mean, it. I would actually say it is the best looking out of all of them because it is directed by yeah. James Wan, and it does. It feels a little different from the last four in this franchise. It does. Especially like... Well, there were those great shots yeah. where uh, Jason Statham <clears throat> and Dwayne The Rock Johnson are fighting and when they would like flip him on the ground, mm -hmm. the camera would flip with them. Yeah. Like, shots like that were really cool. And also in the, like, uh, racing, like at the beginning where Vin Diesel is chasing Jason Statham after the Han's funeral, there is no music and it's just, it just looks so good and edit uh, the editing and everything, it is just such a well done action film but yeah i would actually say like the biggest problem with this one is that it is i don't think that the two stories of this one mesh well because there is unbelievably great story with like the main villain who is driven by revenge but yes. i don't actually think that you need the story with kurt russell and they're trying to get that what is that device's name uh, God's Eye. Uh, God's it's, eye. it's interesting th that you point that out because there were two very different stories. Yeah. And I was at, at first I was hard pressed to figure out how are they going to connect this. And they did. They did connect it, but they didn't need to. Yeah. Like you're saying, this could have been a great standalone revenge film of Jason Statham uh, coming after them. Uh huh. Uh, but when they threw in the God's Eye, it got a little convoluted for me for a while because it's like, okay, so. They have to go find this girl, retrieve the god's eye. Once they give it to Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell will temporarily give it back to them so that they can find Jason Statham and take him out. And then they never needed the god's eye to find Jason Statham because wherever they were, Jason exactly. Statham showed up. That's my so biggest like problem. You don't even need the god's eye to figure out where he is. And so, uh, like you said, it was it, it kind of made it more convoluted than it needed to be, the fact that they had to throw in those two different stories. But I feel like it, I feel like the main reason for this, and tell me what you think about this, is to make everything they do legal. 
because one thing I noticed in this movie is they tried to be more mindful of not killing random people like they did in every other movie where they had no regard for human life whatsoever. I feel like in this movie, they tried to have at least a tad bit more regard for life and not have our main heroes killing random people all over the place because of their utterly insane car chase scenes. And so I feel like part of the reason for the God's Eye was to like officially deputize them as spies so that their business is kind of official and they don't like, you know, get in trouble with the law. I, I kind of feel like that was the reason they threw that in there, but it just didn't, it, it was convoluted. Oh, look, if it would be legal to jump from one building to another in a car, I would do it as well. I mean, it sounds <laughs> awesome, but... <laughs> I don't think I would have the guts to go from one building to the next in a car. I, like, I just... Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do that. But mm -mm. it is so funny in that scene, like, uh, Jason Statham is shooting at them. Vin Diesel just jumps from one building to another. And Jason Statham is just, is just looking at them and he's like, Yes, I did that 10 years ago in Transporter 2 already. So, yeah, it's nothing new to me. But... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but, like, like at that moment, yeah... By far, that's my biggest problem. Like, the two separate stories. Vin Diesel um, is trying to find Jason Statham. Jason Statham is trying to find Vin Diesel. In order for Vin Diesel to find Jason Statham, he has to find God's Eye. But it doesn't really matter because wherever they go, Jason Statham just finds them. So they could just wait for him. It just felt like the, the story kept defeating itself. Mm -hmm. They have to get the God's Eye to find Jason Statham. But there's Jason Statham. <laughs> like, wherever they are, there's Jason Statham. So it was... Yeah, that was kind of hard. And I also... What did you think about Sean returning from Tokyo Drift? Oh my gosh. It was... He looked even older yeah. than he did And remember, he's, back then. he's still 17. Yes, he's supposed to be 17. And this time, he looked like he was 41. <laughs> it just... It, it's just... It was ridiculous to me. It's like, I think they were really hoping we would forget about that. But it's like, oh man, I hope they don't really bring him into this movie like as a main character because that would be even more ridiculous that I have to buy that he's 17. Yeah, in my next movie, I'm actually going to play a five-year-old. and he... Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm sure you can pull that off just fine and it'll be completely believable. I already yeah. have a script and everything. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh... Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> so yeah, uh, Jason Satham, he's awesome. He might... Yo, he's I, awesome. I don't know if he is the best... I, if he would be in this movie more, I would say he's the best villain of this franchise. But as for now, I, yeah. I would still say Luke Evans is still the best villain in this entire franchise. And I think I agree with you. And I think that's a really good point. If Jason Statham had a bigger role... Yeah. I think he would have taken the crown for best villain in this franchise. But, you know, his role was a little smaller, so Luke Evans, I think, still holds that honor of best villain. But, I mean, Jason Statham is awesome. I, absolutely. Awesome to watch that dude fight. The beginning yeah. of this movie, introduction to his character, in it is one take. The entire first take takes, like, five minutes or something like that. And he oh, goes yeah. from the top building in a hospital... Uh, to the lobby and out of the hospital and yeah he just puts grenade in that uh, soldier's hand yeah. and he's like hold this <laughs> speaking of he jason statham blowing things up i thought that was really clever how they um yeah. wrote in that tokyo drift scene which was the in credit scene in the last one and they wrote it into this yeah. one because the last mm -hmm. one you get the in credit scene jason statham calls dominic and he's like you don't know me but you will then in this movie we get the whole other side of that yeah. conversation with that package from Tokyo that blows up Dom's house. And so, like, I just thought that was a really creative way how they kind of brought that in there. But the one place that was kind of made it not fit as much. So I get that he killed Han. It makes no sense that he knew how Han was in that car, how he was racing down that street at that time, and how to take him out. Made no sense. And, and Dom made the comment that Jason Statham was hunting them. But I don't feel like he was, because he didn't go for Tyrese alone, he didn't go for Ludacris alone, he didn't go for Paul Walker alone, he went for Han alone, and then he kept going after Vin Diesel. So I didn't feel like he was hunting them one by one, and I feel like it would have been more powerful if we had a few extra moments where he was like hunting each of them individually, and they somehow barely escaped, you know? Yeah, and I... <laughs> this movie could have taken some risks, actually, because I feel like they killed Han because they had to, because yes. he died in Tokyo Drift. Yeah, I think if, if but, they knew how beloved Han was going to be, and they didn't yeah. make Tokyo Drift, he and Gal Gadot would still be alive. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, they just kill characters whenever they have to. Yeah. And, I mean, they didn't have balls to, like, kill Ludacris or somebody. Like, yeah. <laughs> may maybe they will do it in the eighth one, but I have a feeling that all of them uh, will survive in the eighth movie. Yeah. But, look... Yeah, let's leave that. Yeah, we'll but, leave it. Yep. I mean, <laughs> and that, at that highway sequence where they save uh, the girl from Game of Thrones. Yes. Um, when Dominic and her just j drive off the cliff and they just... <laughs> I can... That car is nothing at the end and they are both fine. Yeah, I know. I but know. the car is completely ruined. They hit like... I I'm, I don't even know. I'm speechless right now because the car turns to mush at the end. He's, it's just like a little block. Yep. But the, and they're that fine. But the, is how I knew yeah. Dominic was alive after he flew at the helicopter and then he yep. hit the ground and rolled. That's how exactly. I knew he lived because it's like he already did this and he lived. He's fine. And also, you should have known that he left because you saw the trailer for the eighth one, right? Yes, yeah, I saw the trailer for the eighth one. Multiple reasons I know he lived. But it's like, the way yeah. what this movie establishes is you only die when you have to, otherwise you live through everything. Why would we have to think that he's dead when, like, one hour and a half before that, he just, he survived even worse exactly. of an accident? Let's talk about Dwayne Johnson. Let's talk about... <laughs> Flexing out of a cast. Yeah. <laughs> That is gonna go to work. There are so many awesome one-liners in this one. So oh, many. Yeah. Like when um, uh, when Marcel Rodriguez just sees Dwayne Johnson and he grabs the minigun and she's like, Did you bring the cavalry? Woman, <laughs> I am the cavalry. <laughs> that was a great line. Oh my gosh. That is fun. This movie had a lot of those 80s one-liner oh, action film yeah. type lines. Almost, like, it was great. Almost every <laughs> single scene ends with a one-liner. I, I yes. actually think that every single scene ends with one, but I can... I think you have to have that in this kind of movie, yeah. because otherwise, what's the point? You got you got to stick the landing, and you got to stick it with the epic one-liner, and, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson had the best one. He's the he's the best part of this movie, even though he's in it for like 15 minutes. He yeah, should, that was so yeah, disappointing. Yeah, I wanted him to be in there more, but he was epic. He was... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can't even... <laughs> And also at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning with the grenade sequence, he falls out of a building, and he's fine. I was surprised he went to the hospital. To be honest with you, <laughs> with everything that this franchise has established, I'm surprised he didn't get up, shake it off, and keep going. Well, the next thing that I definitely wanted to bring up, because I can keep going on on the ridiculous yeah. action, Dom hitting that pavement on the parking garage and it all collapsing down. Oh like, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but that tribute to Paul Walker at the end, oh yeah, that was actually really touching. And even it was though beautiful. I could tell, yeah, so many scenes where I could tell it wasn't Paul Walker, like his brother looked close enough to him that it didn't even bother me. And then that scene when they're driving side by side and it's like a uh, the face overlaid on top of whatever double actor was there, yeah, I didn't yeah. even think that looked bad. Like I just, yeah, I mean, you can tell it's fake, but mm -hmm. I don't care. It, it to me it added this kind of angelic spiritual quality to it, and so like I think it actually looked better than Tarkin in uh, Rogue One, if I'm completely honest. Yeah, because he, yeah, well, it definitely because did. he didn't yeah. say anything. Also, yeah, he just kind of smiled, you know, and yeah, it is it yeah, is very it, unfortunate thing what happened to Paul Walker uh, during filming was. this movie, and that is maybe also why. It, it does feel kind of a little messy, like the story aspects of the movie, because they 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 had to rewrite majority of this one, and that's also why the movie came out a year later than from what they predicted. But yeah, I also think that uh, the ending is very beautifully made, and also the song that was written for him should have gotten should have gotten the, uh, an Oscar nomination for best song, but it didn't. It it is. A terrific song in my opinion but uh, yeah and also the symbolism at the end where he kind of like drives to towards the sunset very beautiful and yeah. like the like he's in a white car mm -hmm. and he's driving into the yeah. light like that was to me that was really good symbolism and i was like oh man and then the flashbacks they did of the other movies of all those different paul walker scenes it's like 
gosh, that was just so well done. And such an amazing tribute to Paul Walker. Yeah, yeah. The way that they did that last part, it made it feel like not just, you know, the fictional characters being family, but it felt like this cast and this crew putting these films together. Yeah, because together they are. Family. They are. They're really yeah, good friends. And, they were, and it was a touching goodbye yeah. from this actual cast. Mm -hmm. And so that just... That was it was a, it was so well done. I think I'm actually gonna give this movie a B. Yeah. I, I even though it was a bit convoluted, yeah. I still really enjoyed the story of it. I love Kurt Russell. I love Jason Statham. Amazing tribute to Paul Walker. Abs like absolutely. just the way they said goodbye to him in this franchise. It was so well done. It was so respectful. It was so touching. So like so many elements in this movie were good, and it was just fun. So I think of all this franchise, this is the one I had the most fun with, and I'm gonna give it a B. I'm I'm so proud of you. Uh, what would you rate this movie? Eight, eight out of ten. <laughs> Just yeah, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so, what is your favorite movie in this franchise? Make sure to let us know in the comments. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, become a Durbanian, and make sure to flip over to Matik's channel and hit the subscribe button on not just his awesome movie review channel. But his channel where he actually makes movies. Matik, tell us about those. Yes, uh, you can just search my name and find my first channel where I talk about movies. I do movie reviews, trailer reactions, so check those out. And I have a second channel called Studio, Studio V Productions where I uh, just create my own content. My, I mean, also movie reviews my, are my own content, but I mean, my own movies, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, I, I released my own feature-length movie last Christmas, and we are very proud of it. It turned out better than we could ever expect. It, 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 was, all, it was honestly speaking, yeah, it, it blew me away, even though I was editing the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It, it turned out so great. So yeah, I would be so grateful if you check it out. We are, also, we are already past 1,000 views. Oh, nice. So this is awesome. So that's awesome. Yes. Well, that's cool, man. Well, definitely go there and check out his movie and, and put it past even more. So go check that out and all that fun stuff. And yeah, check out the other videos we got posted right here on Durbania. I'm Durbin. This is Matiks. Thank you for checking out Durbania.